Hey folks, so we're here today with Magnus Sundelin. Yeah, correctly pronounced. Good. Really? Yeah, good. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I would have said if I hadn't been told Magnus Sundelin. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Magnus is one of our favourite Swedes. Uh, I suppose spoon carver, sloider. Yeah. Would you, what, how would you, what would you term your, yourself as? Hmm. Creator. Nice. Uh, yeah, some kind of creator, yeah. I have this like inner urge or disturbance. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need to, to work with my hands, so yeah. That's the kind of personality I have. I'm a restless person. Yes. It's and good to keep your hands busy. Yeah, and when I keep my hands busy, I kind of find my inner calm. Yeah. So your main thing is, I guess, making tools and carving spoons. Yeah. 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 Um, but through the years, I've been doing like... Um, Lots of stuff, everything from a kayak to making living room furniture to kitchen stools and kitchen tables. And uh, it's kind of whatever gets into my system. Uh, I get this idea. Yeah. Uh, if it's a good idea, I try to, to realize that, that idea. So what brings you back to spoons? Uh, making spoons is like... It appears to be simple, but it's one of the most complex things you, you actually can do when uh, working with wood. Because right. we are working in uh, fr from an idea or to uh, t to start working like three dimensional, both with our hands and visually and inside our brain. So uh, making spoons is complex. It's a, a long process. Yeah, to learn. a challenge but rewarding. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, okay, so I wanted to look at, you've got a lot of different things here, which is great, but yeah. I think maybe if we, if we start with some of your spoons. Absolutely. And I think, so can I smell birch tar? Yeah. Yes. So this is something, I think the first time I met you, may, maybe, um, <laughs> at Spoonfest anyway. Yeah. You were you actually brought a load of birch bark with you? No, um, uh, I didn't. I oh, you killed uh, it from logs. Yeah, we, me and Doug. Yes. He asked me, uh, could we make like a cook with birch bark? And I said, of course. And then we started to peeling this British birch, uh -oh. and, and, the, and the the birch that bark here is well. thin as Bible paper actually compared to the birch bark we have back home. Yes. So we peeled and peeled and peeled and peeled and peeled and um, filled up like a, a biscuit jar. Yeah. A tin can. Uh, and we made our first birch bark cook, was it four, four years ago, I think? First time, yeah. Uh, and we made, made like a, a decent cook that time. I think yeah. we burned it too hard, but uh, it worked. Uh, yeah, I, I love... Uh, and the reason th that I make like the birch tar or Russian oil, as we call it as well, uh, is because when I cut down a birch tree, I want to use as much of the wood and the tree as possible. So it's kind of out of respect for the material to try to use as much as possible. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So for, for the, those of you that maybe aren't following us, um, birch trees have got a very oily bark. Yeah. Um, and when Magnus is saying uh, he cooked it, essentially it's a bit like making charcoal, isn't it? You kind it's of the same, it's the same process, yeah. Do it without air. Yeah. So you're doing it in an enclosed tin, heating it right up. Yeah. Um, and then the kind of oil tar so sweat, sweats out of the bark. Of the bark, yeah. And collects at the bottom. Yeah. So. Simply explain, you, you dig like a hole in the ground where you put uh, a glass jar and then you have some kind of metal plate between the glass jar and then with a tin can. And then we seal it with like sand or clay or something to get yes. it kind of airtight. Mm. Uh, the only air that, that, that exists is the air inside 
Because if you let air in, it's just going to yeah, burn. Yeah, that's, what that's why. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 totally. And uh, yeah, I've been doing birch bark for some years now. And uh, if you want like a really black tar, yeah, you should make the burn fiercely. Mm. Feed it feed the fire and if you want like a lighter oil uh, then you're more cautious when you and that process takes a longer time but I call that lighter oil kind of virgin oil as <laughs> amazing it makes uh, <laughs> it, it goes a bit lighter this is like virgin oil on the handles of right your knife and uh, oh so you've used it for all of these because yeah, yeah. it does I wish this was smell o vision but yeah <laughs> <laughs> it really does smell yeah, great. Yeah, it has I love the smell of birch tar in the morning. Um, and this is kind of a, a connection when... It smells uh, like victory. If we're getting back to spoons. Uh, so, the, and, and you, so you use it for staining for the yeah, colour. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But also it protects it, right? Yeah. Because it's, it's an oil. Yeah, it's an oil and a colour uh, or a pigmented oil. So I put on a layer with the, the birch birch tar and then uh, like one coat with linseed oil just very very thin and then it dries yeah mm -hmm. beautiful yeah uh we'll have to get you well you guys need to get out there get hold of some birch tar and sniff it um but i can tell you it smells amazing um so this is a good segue right because um this also showing what you're kind of known for with your spoons is yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. complex decoration. So w I guess I would call this chip carving of yeah. sorts. Yeah. It's How would what the what definition? Uh, call roasting is another technique. When you call roast, you just make like a a cut in the wood. You don't remove any wood. Uh, yes. And when we chip carve, we make patterns by cutting away wood to get like thin intricate lines or uh, triangle shapes and most of the ship carving is actually based on uh, um, the triangle yes totally yeah so this one's more like the coal roasting right? that one is uh, totally coal roast yeah yeah um, um, and then these ones are the kind of chip carving yeah you have got a lot of triangles but you've also got a lot of other shapes yeah and um, you can make uh, like triangles in uh, and get yeah k kind of bent curves and still have uh, a triangle shape like this spoon um, and it's nice to work with yeah totally i mean i guess um yeah, if, unless you're just doing a V-cut, the next simplest shape is going to be the triangle. Yeah. But if you add curves to that, then you're really enabling yourself to, to do all sorts of shapes. Yeah. Um, so what's that one? That one is uh, <laughs> the motor spoon, actually. Uh, <laughs> the story behind this one is I have a friend back in Sweden. Uh, we went to university together. Yeah. He's a crafts teacher, slow teacher, just like me. Uh, but Michael chose to work with leather. Uh, and after we graduated from the uni, he never worked as a teacher. Uh, he started his own company business. And he, he actually makes saddlebags. Right. H-A-M designs, uh, no advertising, but <laughs> That's his company. And uh, Motorhead. The British, They're a band. Yeah, the famous British band, which also is one of my favorite bands. Uh, got in contact with Michael and asked him to, to make the saddlebags for their Triumph motorcycles because right. Motorhead were kind of sponsored by Triumph. Amazing. Bikes, yeah. So I know, knew that, uh, yeah, he's a good friend with the band. So, and let me turn 70 and i was like yeah I, I would like to make a spoon for for the bass player lead singer in motorhead let me kill mister so i i phoned michael up and just asked him is there any way that yeah no problem but i can't give you lemmy's phone number yeah <laughs> yeah so but uh then he died mm. uh, one day after turning 70 so 
He never got the spoon. Oh, that's sad. No. But I would have loved to see Lemmy Kilmeister eating porridge with one of my spoons. Yeah. <laughs> kind of crazy. Yeah. And oh. uh, I get very much inspiration from music when I carve uh, both like traditional folk music, but uh, I'm a metal guy. I listen to yeah. metal music, so... Yeah, and I, a lot of the spoons of yours that I've seen on social media yep. have definitely been inspired by yeah, yeah, yeah. that, which is great. And I think it, it really works well with the kind of intricate designs that you do. Um, and it's a very specific take that you have on it. For me, it seems very much a Swedish tradition to decorate, to use colour. Um, yeah. But your, your patterns are very much your own, which is great. Um, so, and obviously, uh, so is, it, is this, did you make this? Not the axe, but the handle, yeah. Right, okay. Uh, it's uh, Hans Karlsson axe. Because I love that bit of letter carving, it's great. Yeah, yeah thank you, thank you. Uh, um. I had a question about that, because it says, by the grace of God. Oh. And I had that question one time, uh, do you believe in God, Magnus? Yeah, I, I do, but in my own way. Yes. I don't want to be sorted into... Uh, certain direction or but I, I believe everything is connected uh, we humans are connected to each other and to mother nature and so on uh, yeah so it's kind of body and soul great yeah well i love that i love that let's carving and uh so did your mate make this or was no. this you as well uh, <laughs> i had that in the mail from uh an american guy who was following me on uh Oh yeah. Instagram. So who's that? Do we know who he is? Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't remember his name right now. It's kind of American names are difficult to remember, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But get in uh, touch. Uh, <laughs> but can you see that? Little, it's one of those. What's that sign? That metal. That's a, yeah, That's it's kind metal. of uh, when we go to the concerts, we make the horns like this. It stands for <laughs> heavy metal. Amazing. That's very good. I love it. And that, for me, what I find really exciting about it is that um, Sloyd and Kraft can just be taken in whatever direction. Absolutely. And that's such a beautiful thing. There's so much space for so many different personalities. Um, and it's that's one of the wonderful things about it. That we can all come together as a community and all be kind of pushing in one direction, kind of, with the kind of our love for trees, yeah. making shavings, functional things, but also just take it wherever we want. You know, Absolutely. And express yourself. Yeah. Um, so that's very cool. Okay, so whilst we're talking about tools then, yeah. um, maybe, uh, maybe I should take these spoons to one side. Um, and have a little look at your so so you're um, primarily a teacher of woodcraft and metalcraft yeah um, and then beyond that your main focus is on making tools and spoons yeah um, and so most of the tools that you make well most ones that I see you sell online are things like draw knives yeah. and straight That's knives absolutely yeah. yeah. Um, so let's start with your draw knife then. Um, All right. Talk us through it. Uh, this draw knife is kind of special because um, I developed it together with my kids at school. I bought like traditional spoon knives and when the kids started to carve they didn't have the strength so it was kind of hacking. Ah, yeah, yeah. And they uh, lost interest. And then I was thinking about making something with the edge line, making that kind of convex. Oh, okay. Uh, because then you can start the cut from the side. Just it's the same principle uh, as when you cut with uh, a Sloyd knife. So we, I made a couple of prototypes uh, and I had uh, selected group of uh, students and I told them to be like uh, super critic and hard on me uh, and after a couple of months uh, I found a 
type of uh, draw knife that worked really smooth. Uh, and then I, I brought a couple of spoon knives here to Spoonfest, I think, the first time I was here, like five years ago. Mm. Uh, and it was some spoon carvers, Jane Micklesborough and Amy, I think, bought one, tried them out, and yeah, I believe they're quite pleased. And Anya have like three or four of my draw knives as well. Uh, it's a small one, it's a short blade, and uh, you work very narrow to the spoon or whatever you carve. But now I, I like to to make tools. And now I have uh, another good thing coming up, but it's still on the prototype stage. But it's oh, great. A tool for hollowing or right. clean, clean cutting uh, spoon bowls. Yeah. Yes. But I'll be back. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Okay. So and so, what steel do you use for this? Uh, in the beginning, I was uh, into this recycling, mm -hmm. uh, one hundred percent. Then I took like spring coils from cars. Yes, totally. Yeah. Uh, but the quality turned out to be kind of various. Some knives snapped. Mm. Uh, though I, I thought I made a, a proper heat treatment and stuff. So nowadays I, I buy uh, a carbon steel. Yes, it yeah. Contains uh, 0.8 percent carbon, and I have this uh, diagram over with the correct tempering and annealing and yes, so yeah. on. So, uh, but I don't have like a super fancy blacksmith shop. Uh, it's kind of just a shed with a soil floor and I only do tools from like mid-April to at the end of October. Yes. Then it gets too cold and my anvil cools down and I don't want to risk to get like micro cracks and stuff. So make just small batches every year. Mm. 30 draw knives maybe. Uh, 50, 60 sloyd knives and a couple of spoon knives, some chip carvers, and then yeah. the season is over. And uh, yeah, I've been lucky. People like to buy the tools, so I have like a waiting list <laughs> every year. Perfect. <laughs> right now, uh, they actually order from Japan. They want my draw knife in Japan. Ah, yeah. uh, great. So yeah. But World I like this uh, kind of small scale business because I work as a teacher four days a week and then uh, I run my own small business one day a week. Yes, but, yeah. Uh, the reality is that I work like get up really early in the morning, work with my craft for two hours before going up, making breakfast to the family, going off to work and then night time sometimes. So yeah. Yeah. My working days can be kind of long. Yeah. Depending on uh, I know But that I like feeling. to work, so it suits me fine. It's good. <laughs> okay, so uh, and then we've got some Sloyd knives yeah. here. Um it's a really nice handle that. Thank you. And so we've got your we haven't actually looked at your um the logo. Yeah. MS this kind of uh, metal style over that one nice <laughs> so it's this a uh, similar kind of steel and do you how do you hollow grind it uh, I have like a flea market grinder home that I bought for like 10 quids Right, yeah, yeah bargain. And, and yeah, and uh, really, really cheap belt sander as well. Uh, and then I have my Tormek. Yes. Tormek machine. Um, Love a Tormek. Uh, so my grinding tools are super simple and uh, kind of super cheap compared to... Uh, I watched Sean Hellman's yes. equipment or mm. Nick Vesterman and... 
I believe they produce like bigger batches of tools compared to me. Yeah. I make like maybe 200, 250 tools uh, a year. So yeah, I'm yeah. satisfied with that. Great. I want to keep it small. Okay, and then talking of small, yeah. is, this, is this one of your chip carving knives? Yeah, that's the uh, so-called shark tooth. Nice. So, yeah, the small one. Uh, and that knife, I made it both for making uh, chip carving and coal roasting. So, yeah, it's a thin, narrow blade. Yeah, perfect. It work, works for both chip carving and uh, coal roasting, actually. Yeah, so for for the coal roasting, um, well, I suppose both coal roasting and chip carving, you want a very thin blade, right? Um, you don't want the the wood to have to move too much for no. you to get the chips out, and you don't want to have to push too hard to get the tip no. in for coal roasting. So, um, and you've used birch bark for the sheaths, which is super yeah. nice. Um, yeah, and it smells amazing. <laughs> yeah, the, the birch tree is like it's, it's very. Uh, a special smell. Cool. So um, it'd be great to see see it in action. Um, the, the ship carver, absolutely. Uh, when I make like the patterns on my spoons, I always start with like a frame around. That mm. so that's really important, actually, isn't it? Because if you go right to the edge, it's going to weaken weaken the edge a bit, I suppose. Yeah, it could be like that. But what I do, I won't draw now. But I use my ugly finger. Excuse me, the long finger. Uh, I pin down the pen with the, the index finger and the thumb, and decide the distance from the side of the spoon, and just draw a line all the way around uh, to make it be like consist consistent all the way around. And then sometimes I use like a ruler and uh, divide this area into fields. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I do just what I call the freestyle carving. And the freestyle carving concept from here is like, yeah, I have a frame. And what I will do now is I won't draw anything. I just take the ship carving knife, decide on what, whatever point and I decide now I want to make like a bent line just on freehand like that and then I'm gonna build the whole pattern out of this line so yeah I, I think I will continue so I get from like that that stopping point and try to get like a bent curve again so so your thumb is like a pivot point right yeah exactly yeah. Uh, so I, I have my thumb to support the cut and at some time, this little knuckle on, on the index finger will go down and support as well. So it's tri triangulated, basically. Yeah. So, so your thumb like, and your yeah. finger and the tip. So, so what I got now is like three support points, but uh, the knife tip isn't the support point because that one is going to make, right. yes. make, make the work or the cut. But I strive for kind of security instead of trying to be up in the free air because here I'm out of control. So yes. So two points, the thumb and the little knuckle of... You can use uh, a look at my elbow to perform a cut like this. It's impossible to have your arm up against the body. You need to lift. So it works almost like a, it's a kind of compass. And then you need to stop before you can't cross any cut line. And when it gets narrow here at the, the end, I can only support this cut with uh, the tip of my thumb because my index knuckle won't get room. And now I have a kind of progressive cut that goes from I don't know if you're able to see this. First I made like the frame all the way around. And then I took my ship carving knife and just pulled a stroke like this. And then started to build the base of uh, this upcoming pattern now. Um, 
So what I will do now from this point, I'll kind of find the center from here and attach that line to to the base because right now I don't have so much wood to or the spoon to hold on to. And the next step now when I have like straight cuts just down the wood, I've cut uh, cut off all all the fibers. I angle the, the chip carver a bit like 12, 15 degrees, almost the same angles as when you're writing with a pencil or something. And you try to get like one long ship or so it's kind of connected. Then go from the other wi way. So the way I do this, uh, then I make like three cuts per, per line. I know for example, Jogge makes only two. You start with the angle, then the angle, and go for it. Uh, but I'm not that good, so I, I try to save to get like a ditch in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Something that kind of stops me from failing. And it's yeah, so you've it's got basically you've gone down straight down, and now you're doing from the one sides. either side. So yeah. We, uh, so like a cut through here, we have like a V-shaped. Yes, yeah, totally. So s this is kind of uh, how I start uh, every spoon. And then I go from there. This is an example of a totally freestyle carved spoon as well. And if I'm in the mood, which I am quite often, uh, I build the pattern more and more and more intricate with uh, like uh, three-sided triangle cuts or two-sided triangle cuts. Uh, I believe we have uh, that one is a good example of. And this one is isn't freestyle carved. This one is made the frame first and then uh, took the ruler and divided th that area into smaller fields and. and got off from there so yeah it's great and, and I think the using the very fine pencil is a very useful tip uh, absolutely yeah. because otherwise you're constantly having to sharpen your pencil yeah um, so this is uh, what I mostly use is like uh, nail point nine millimeter what do you call it like an engineer pen or yes propelling pencil engineer pencil yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and I believe that you have like nail point three millimeters as well, but that uh, I'm too clumsy, so I snap off <laughs> the leads all the time. So Classic. Nail point nine is good for me. I'm trying to push through the, the spoon. Brilliant. Uh, and sometimes when I make uh, the patterns, uh, I reach like a certain a point where I can't go on. It's just kind of tilt in my head and I just put that spoon aside. Yes. And have a cup of tea. Yeah, or uh, like 500 cups of tea and then get back to the spoon a couple of months later because then it kind of yeah. Oh yeah, now I know what I will do with this. And some days you have this flow, you can make a couple of spoons because I never repeat the pattern. Every pattern is like improvised. Mm. Uh, so I only make like one spoon, one pattern, one off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Uh, and now I've gone from like painting my spoons with uh, like very bold colors and stuff to yeah, I, I started to appreciate the wood, and I'm kind of striving for the perfect non-decorated Magnus spoon. Right. So yeah. That's what I'm saying because I'm kind of terrified of making just a naked spoon. Yes. I'm afraid of bad shape or bad spoon or so sometimes I think maybe I try to hide a bad spoon <laughs> <laughs> behind <laughs> a lot of chip <laughs> and stuff. I don't know. No, I, I make decent spoons, but uh, yeah. I know what you mean. There can be spoon anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. So right now I'm in a, like a process uh, to put uh, the chip carving and corrosing aside yeah. and just trust in a good shape of a natural plain spoon, just a spoon. Yes. 
That's what and, I do. And, uh, I mean, another way of looking at it is being lazy. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I, can't, I can't do all of that. Yeah, it's just no, too and much I, for me. I can't, can't make your spoons either as well, but there's something that I strive for. Uh, yeah. You've been an inspiration to me during the years. Like oh, thanks, Magnus. Uh, Jared spoons and yeah. so on. But I believe when I started the card spoons, um, 93, I had the book uh, Swedish Carving Techniques by Ville Sundqvist. And at that occasion I started at university to become a, a woodcraft, metalcraft teacher. And I read that book and it was like a hallelujah moment to me. And I was like, this is the way I'm going to follow. The way yes. of the axe and the knife. And all my teacher were like, oh no, you need to use machines and uh, planers and bandsaws and stuff. And I, I said, no, I don't believe in it. I believe in the axe and the knife. So. Yeah, totally. And then Villa's spoons were like a great inspiration with his kind of minimalistic decoration, but so powerful. Yes, yeah. And like uh, Lars from Denmark here is kind of brings that heritage from Villa on and on with his spoons and Villa's philosophy about the complex simplicity. Yes, so yeah. Cool, man. Well, it's been really nice to check out some of your stuff. Thank um, you. And it's great to see you again. Yeah. Uh, and there's so much stuff you've got here. You guys should definitely make sure you follow Magnus. Um, what, what's your Instagram? Uh, Sloyd Minus. Sloyd as in Pink Floyd. Floyd. Uh, so Sloyd Magnus. Brilliant. Go check him out. This is beautiful, by the way. I love the green, green and red, and yeah. fantastic letter carving as well. Just playing around. <laughs> <laughs> Good work, Magnus. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers, man. <laughs>